Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to add token-based authentication to your Flask REST Plus API. So I'll be starting with the code that I worked on in the last Flask REST Plus API video, so check that one out if you haven't seen it already. But if you have, then we can go ahead and get started in this video. So I just wanna note that before I start, I'm focusing more on the Flask REST Plus part of this and less on the token-based authentication part. So if you're not familiar with token-based authentication, then check out my other videos on token-based authentication. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to tell Flask REST Plus that I am going to be expecting some kind of token somewhere. So to do this, I'm first going to put this above the API object, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to instantiate API with the eventual dictionary that I create right now. So this dictionary is going to be called authorizations. Of course, you can call it whatever you want, but by convention in Flask REST Plus, you call it authorizations. Then I'm going to add a key, and I'm going to call this API key. And with this API key, I am going to be able to reference this particular authorization. So you could have multiple authorizations, but in this particular case, I'll just have one. So I have API key, and this is going to be another dictionary. So now in this dictionary, I'm going to kind of describe what I'm expecting. So the type is going to be an API key. In is the location where I'm expecting this key. I'm expecting the key in the header, and the name of this header is going to be x-api key. Of course, you can use some other name for the header that is relevant for token-based authentication. So if you want to switch that up, you can just change it there. But in my case, I'll just use x-api-key for the header. Next thing I want to do is I want to pass this to the API when I instantiate it. So authorizations is the parameter that I'm passing to, and then the dictionary is authorization. So same name, and I'll save that. And before I refresh the screen, I want you to take a look at what it looks like. It's pretty plain, doesn't have much beyond, you know, API default, space URL, whatever. But if I were to refresh the screen, I now see this authorize button here at the top. So if I click this, Take a look at what I have here. I have a name for the header. In is location for the header. And then I have an input that I can type in a token. So once I hit authorize, what Flask REST Plus and Swagger will do together is every time I send a request to one of my endpoints using a method, it's automatically going to send that token along with the request. So if I were to hit try it out here, you can see in the curl version of the request, I have the key that I typed in randomly when I hit the authorize button. So that's the first step. The next thing that I want to do is I want to kind of document this particular endpoint directly. So I have the authorize button, which will allow me to kind of log in with a token and then I can hit log out and then it forgets that token. But I also want to do it on the individual endpoint level. So to do that, it's pretty simple. I'm going to go down to my language class for my API, and I'm going to use a decorator. And this decorator is the api.doc decorator. And as you can probably guess, it has something to do with documenting the API. So it doesn't change how the API behaves. It just changes how it's documented in Swagger. So what I'm going to pass to api.doc is the security, and then the key for that dictionary that I have for authorizations, telling it that this particular endpoint requires the API key authorization. So I'll save that and I'll refresh. And now when I take a look, I see this here. So if I click it, I see the ability to authorize once again. So because my app restarted, it forgot about my old token. So I'll authorize again. And now it appears to be blue on this side, saying that I'm ready to use this route. I have a token ready to be authenticated. So that's the second part. And if you look at language, uh, language doesn't require this, but this endpoint does. So when I do the authorization here, it applies to this endpoint. When I do it up here, it applies to everything. But uh, basically, they behave the same way in every other part. So now what I want to do is I want to actually add some kind of token 
base authentication. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a decorator. And this decorator is going to make sure that only people with a correct token can see what's inside of that endpoint or access that endpoint, use that endpoint, whatever you want to call it. So the first thing I need to do when creating a decorator, import from funk tools, import wraps. And I've created a video on decorators before because it's a tricky topic. So I'll skip over the details of how decorators work. But if you want to learn how decorators work, I have a video on that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a decorator. I'll just put it down here and I'll call this decorator token required. It's going to take in the function that is decorating. And then I'll use wraps, which I just imported from funk tools with that same F. And then I'll have the inner function called decorated. It is going to take in some keyword arguments or actually positional arguments first and then the keyword arguments second. And then now inside here, I can work on the actual part that validates the token. So what I'm going to do is I'll say uh, if, let's say X API key in, and I'll be using the request from Flask. So I need to import requests. And what I'll say is if that API key is in requests.headers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign that value to something called token. So X API key. And then I will say, if not token, so let's just start this as none to make it a little more clear. So if that token doesn't exist, so either API key isn't in the headers or it is in the headers, but there's nothing in it, then I want to check if there's nothing there for those two cases. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'll return a message to the user saying, let's call this message. I'll say token is missing. And remember, because I'm using Flask REST Plus, I don't have to use JSONify. If I were doing this in a regular Flask app without Flask REST Plus, I have to wrap this in JSONify because it is a dictionary and by default, Flask expects HTML when you hit return, but so when you're using Flask REST Plus, it's expecting JSON. So I can just pass in a dictionary and Flask REST Plus will convert this to a JSON object because I'll be using this decorator within Flask REST Plus. So just keep that in mind. If you have other routes, then you'll have to JSONify, but in this particular case, since I'm only going to be using it in a Flask REST Plus route, I don't have to put JSONify around it. And then I'll also pass the status code just to say that, you know, your authorization is messed up. So I'll pass 401. You don't have to do this exactly, but it always helps. And then what I'll do is I'll say something like, uh, I'll print out the token that I get on the console so we can see it clearly because I'm not actually going to do anything with it. So format with token. So if it makes it past this if statement, that means that there is in fact a token and I'm going to print out that token. And then after I print out that token, I'm simply going to return the function that was decorated. So I need to take in the arguments if there are any. And then I need to return the decorated function down here. Okay, so that should be it for the token required. Now what I want to do is I want to go to one of my endpoints. I'll just focus on the git it's exactly the same process for posts. And just note that these decorators that you put above the method, the order isn't important. So I'm going to put token required here. And that means that if I don't pass a token along with git, then it will return that message token is missing. So let's go ahead and try that. I'll refresh this. I won't authorize. I'll go to git and I will try it out. And I get the message token is missing. And that's exactly what I want to see because I didn't pass any token along with the request. But if I were to pass in a token, like this is my token, hit authorize. Now it's blue over here and I hit try it out. Now I see the correct response. I see the framework and the language that I have. And if I look at my console, I see this is my token here. So if I wanted to go one step further and do some actual authentication of that token for whatever reason, I could do something like this. I could say, 
if token is equal to my token, or let's say it's not equal. So this my token is going to be the token that is required. Obviously, in a real use case, it wouldn't be something this simple, and you'd have a way of actually validating that. But like I said, you can watch my video on token-based authentication to learn how to do that. So if token is not equal to my token, what I want to do is I want to return something like your token is wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. And I won't pass the status code. Well, how about this? I'll pass the status code, status code 401 again. And then what I'll do is I will try this again. So refresh, go here, go to Git, try it out. Token is missing. Now what I'll do is I'll add some token, authorize, and I'll try it again. And it tells me your token is wrong, wrong, wrong. So I didn't enter the right token. So I'll do this again. I'll log out. And then I'll log back in using the correct token, which happens to be my token. I'll authorize, try it out. And now I see that I can see the results of the actual request. So it got past all the authentication part. It went into the actual method and it returned the data that I was looking for. So that's pretty much it on using token-based authentication in Flask REST Plus. Like I said, if you don't know about decorators, you can watch my decorators video. I'll put a link in the description below. I also put a link in the description below for the token-based authentication video in APIs, which can help you with this. So you would just apply what you learned in that video to here because the rest of the process is unique to only tokens. Uh, the part that comes before that is what I showed you in this video, how to do it with Flask REST Plus, but what happens after that, like in this decorator, that's more generic. So you can do that with Flask REST Plus or any other API that you want. So I'll have the code for this video in the description below, a link to it as well. And that's about it. So if you have any questions on token-based authentication in Flask REST Plus, you can leave a comment down below and I'll answer your questions as soon as I get to it. You know, as my channel gets more popular, I have more comments coming in. So it takes me a little longer to get to them, but I try to respond to every single comment. So if it takes me a while, please be patient and I will eventually get to it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe and then hit the notification bell right next to this next to the subscribe button so you can see my videos when they're released. And uh, that's about it. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.